Hello and welcome to this video. In today's video, we will be discussing best practices for creating Docker files. Docker is a powerful tool for containerizing applications, and by following these best practices, you can ensure efficient and reliable containerization of your projects. Here I have a Python file, and I want to create a Docker file for my Python script. One, use a lightweight base image. The first best practice is to start your Docker file with a lightweight base image. This helps keep your container size small and minimizes vulnerabilities. For Python scripts, consider using base images like Python 3 Alpine or Python 3 Slim. It's worth mentioning that you should always check the Docker Hub repository for the available tags of the base image you choose. Look for the lightest tag available. By considering the lightest tag, you can further optimize the size of your Docker image and reduce any potential unnecessary dependencies. Next, explicitly specify the Python version you require in your Docker file. This helps ensure consistency across different environments. For example, use the from Python 3.10 instruction to use Python 3.10 in your container. It's important to always check the available Python versions and update your base image accordingly to reduce the technical lag of your Docker container. Technical lag refers to the delay between the current version of your application running in production and the latest available Python image. This helps keep your application up to date and ensures you are leveraging the latest features of the Python ecosystem. Remember, reducing technical lag is crucial for maintaining a secure and optimized containerized environment. Create a dedicated working directory to keep your files organized. It's a good practice to create a dedicated working directory inside the container. This directory will serve as a location for your application files and resources. For example, you can set the app directory by using the workdir instruction in your Docker file. Four, install dependencies efficiently. Separating the installation of dependencies from your application code can significantly speed up subsequent builds. Copy the requirements.txt file into the container and install the dependencies using the pip command. This allows Docker to cache the installed dependencies and avoid redundant installations. Five, use multi-stage builds. For projects with build time requirements or native dependencies, you can consider using multi-stage builds. This helps keep the final image size smaller. The first stage can be used for building assets or installing build dependencies, while the second stage includes only the runtime dependencies and application code. Here I'll demonstrate an example for a simple application. In the first stage called the build stage, I'll install the required packages. Then in the second stage, I'll copy the installed packages. For bigger projects or languages that need to be compiled, such as Golang, you can compile the source code to an executable binary in the build stage. Then, in the subsequent stage, you only need to copy the binary files, resulting in a more optimized image. 6. Copy only necessary files. When copying files into the container, make sure to include only the necessary files. This avoids including unnecessary dependencies or sensitive information. For example, in this small project, in the first stage, I only need to copy the script file and the requirements.txt file, which lists the project dependencies. Then, in the second stage, I can copy the script file again from the previous stage, along with the packages that were installed during the build stage. This way, I avoid unnecessary files or artifacts from being included in the final image. By selectively copying only the required files, you keep your Docker image focused and minimize its size. 7. Exclude with Dr. Ignore. If there are files that are not relevant to the build, you can use a Dr. Ignore file to exclude them. This file supports exclusion patterns similar to the Ignore files. It's a handy way to keep unnecessary files out of your Docker image without restructuring your source repository. Here I have a Docker Ignore file for this project. When we copy the entire folder into the container, Docker will automatically ignore logs, git files, markdown files, and CI files. These files are not needed for the containerized application and can be safely excluded. Using a docker ignore file helps streamline the build process and keeps the Docker image clean and focused by excluding files that are not required for runtime. 8. Clean up unnecessary files. Remember to clean up any unnecessary files or artifacts created during the build process. Use run instructions in your Docker file to delete temporary files and directories. This helps reduce the final image size and keeps it more lightweight. Here I use multi-stage. But to show you in the first stage after updating the package dependencies, I remove the list folder 
When you run apt-get update and apt-get install commands to install packages, the Package Manager app in this case downloads and stores package information in the list directory. This information includes the package metatod indexes and other related files. Removing the package lists using RMRF list helps avoid potential issues related to stale or outdated package information inside the Docker image. It ensures that the package lists are not included in the final image, reducing its size. 9. Run without privileges. If a service can run without privileges, it's considered a good practice to switch to a non-root user using the user instruction. This helps improve security by reducing the potential impact of any security vulnerabilities in your application. Here, firstly, a username scriptizer is created next. The ownership of the IP op directory and its contents is changed to scriptizer scriptizers using the shown command. This ensures that the user scriptizer has the necessary permissions to access and modify the files in that directory. Then, the hmod command is used to set the permissions of the top directory to text 755, granting read, write, and execute permissions to the owner script user and read and execute permissions to the group and others. Finally, the cmads command is used again to set the permissions of the site packages directory to 555, which grants read and execute permissions to all users, but restricts write access. This ensures that the installed Python packages in that directory are accessible to all users but cannot be modified. 10. Add labels. You can add labels to your Docker image to help organize and annotate your images for various purposes. Labels can be used to record licensing information, provide metadata about the image, aid in automation, or for any other reasons you find useful. And that wraps up our discussion on best practices for Dockerfile for Python scripts. By following these guidelines, you can create efficient and reliable Docker containers. Thank you for watching and be sure to subscribe to our channel for more informative content. See you next time.